Thank you very much. Yes, my name is Martin Smith. I'm the coordinator of Ecosystem Restoration. It's a program that's been offered at the college for over 20 years now, and it is a postgraduate program. We anticipate students to have a BSc or a BA in some related uh, area, environmental science, botany, zoology, and we also accept graduates from, from diploma programs across the country as well. So yes, um, there's my email right here. So as questions arise, if you don't want to speak out loud in front of uh, the other people, then please send me an email and you'll find I'll respond pretty quickly and give you, tell you what I know or refer you to the people who do know. So let's get started. Next slide, please. So the, the ecosystem restoration program fundamentally is trying to provide students graduating from university programs generally who haven't had an awful lot of hands-on experience, an awful lot of in-class, in-lecture courses, a lot of talk, a lot of slideshows, but physically haven't had an opportunity to learn, learn how to do an awful lot of things. So we very much focus our curriculum on, on a portion of actually training, teaching, lecturing online or in person, and then getting out and applying. So we put that as hands-on, boots-on learning opportunities. For instance, I teach a course right now in hydrology, and we spend an hour talking about drainage basins, flows, rain, precipitation, but the students all term have been working on measuring stream flows, rainfall, precipitation, and trying to put it all together using some hydrological modeling. So we're very practical in that sense. Why do we take such a focus on that? That's what employers want. Employers, they appreciate the fact you may be well trained in a university setting taking courses, but they want you to be able to do things, physically do things for them. And so we're very much oriented towards coming up with uh, training, uh, with, uh, curriculum training or off uh, extracurricular training, which provides you certain skills and specific certifications to make you more employable. We're also uh, part of the Society of Ecological Restoration, an international organization. And when you graduate from this program, you have to be a certified environmental practitioner in training as you graduate from our program. Next slide, please. So when we um, deliver our programs, we have to think about what the, we've promised the government and promised students what, what we're actually going to deliver in this program. So these are some important learning outcome examples. We try and achieve through teaching that the students have got some of these skills. So for instance, these are five examples of about 10 of them, trying to come up with collecting and preparing accurate field data, maps and background research to be able to really come up with coming up with good information to provide your prospective employers. We also want to work on coming up with site restoration plans and figure out what it would actually take to, to implement restoration projects in terms of budgets, in terms of planning, people management. We're also trying to come up with you working on coming up with comprehensive descriptions of reference ecosystems. So using the ecology you've, you've got from your undergraduate program and put it together quite often on a GIS platform. And we're trying to make sure that you are aware of health and safety requirements and environmental regulations. So you're actually fitting into your job uh, situation, knowing what you have to do in terms of health and safety and regs. So practical training emphasis, yes. This is an in-person program. Even last year during the depths of COVID, we still ran about 50% of the program. Anything we offered historically in the field, outdoors, hands-on, we continue to do. And we continue to do this this year as well. So we have a very strong practical training. Our campus is really lends itself to that. We're out in, in relatively countryside circumstances. We have a relatively large campus right beside the Niagara Escarpment, where we can do quite a bit of work, field work directly on campus. We also go off on field trips with, within an hour of, a, of the campus to go to more interesting or more specific sites. If, for instance, we're looking at different ecosystems for floor identification and ecological land classification, we do some traveling and quite a few field trips over the year. So that is a strong emphasis program, making students learn how to do things with their hands and put it together to increase your employability. Next slide, please. So yes, we've found over the years that we can only teach so much within the curriculum and as new requirements come up, we keep track of what jobs are looking for. So for instance, we do uh, do some extra, extracurricular training of chainsaw safety and chainsaw operations. So that's something we found that some municipalities and some conservation authorities are looking for those practical skills. 
We also have students who are heading off to Northern Alberta, a remote location, and they need training in wilderness first aid. So we organize that stuff. It's kind of, kind of a fun practice for them. And third of all, we're trying to come up with working a lot, developing field techniques for ecological engineering and bioengineering. The left slide shows where we get out and work with conservation authorities on large projects. And they really have come to depend on us to, to be able to provide a lot of volunteers to get big projects done. There's also, the program has what's called a year long project. It begins in the fall, but really picks up steam if from January through to April. And that's when you're actually working with a government organization or an NGO or industry working on a specific project. You're involved with project planning and management implementation of these projects, working with an actual client. The faculty, we, we sort of liaise between the two of you and help you out what you need to know. But the idea is to, for you to develop hard and soft skills and working with these actual employers. And in the end, you produce a technical report and a proper presentation given to the, the client. And in order to increase your grad portfolio and your, and your marketability in your resumes. So we really direct all these activities towards you being able to describe in your resume things you've done, things you've learned, presentations you've made, proposals you've written with the idea that you're trying to improve your appeal to employers. Next slide, please. We also work quite a bit with working on animal monitoring projects. Uh, that's a strong appeal of students uh, in this entire area of ecosystem restoration. A lot of students, a lot of young people, they want to work with animals, they want to work with species at risk, and they want to make a difference. So we fortunately on our campus, because of its size, we're able to look at barn swallow habitat. We're looking at the bowels, the bats and the owls, which are living on campus. We have some snake hibernacular monitoring going on. We've got redback salamanders, spotted and blue spotted salamanders, which we're also monitoring the populations and trying to restore vernal pools. So actually directly on campus, because of the nature of our campus, we're able to do an awful lot of animal monitoring and ecosystem restoration right then and there. Um, we also have an organization we've been had going for but eight years now, we call it Society of Ecological Restoration Student Chapter. You are tied into the SCR, this international organization, and I try and get the students to work independent of me on specific projects that they're interested in, specific projects that really would help their employability, and specific projects where they can actually socialize and get together. Probably the most important element of the SCR is the student-organized job fair each winter. In this case, they get together and they and they come up with prospective employers and invite those employers onto campus. But that, those were the old days. Last year, we had an entire job fair with about four employers. It was an entirely online affair done over two Fridays. And it was extremely successful as in students got to have face-to-face -face, uh, interviews with all this range of employers over the course of those 16 hours. It's a 16 hour long job fair. And it really worked because employment was significantly higher last year as a result of this one than in previous years, despite COVID. So we're quite proud of how the students organized that. So in terms of career opportunities, what are you gonna to wanna to do out there? Well, quite a few students end up working for rest, um, uh, conservation authorities. Quite a few go to the Toronto Regional Conservation Authority, City of Toronto, Conservation Halton, a few students the Niagara Pinsy Conservation Authority. Other students end up going into consulting companies, working as, as species at risk um, specialists, working on as wildlife biologists for consulting companies. Some students, government jobs are few and far between, but quite a few students do contract work for a few years and actually end up with full-time jobs in government, but that's more rare. We find there's quite a few jobs out there for students this year. We have employment rates of 50, 60% most years. Last year, as I said, much higher. Next slide, please. Yes, we have here's our, some recent examples. Alex Meeker, she's working for Conservation Halton. She's been there for a couple of years now, and she is in contact, constant contact with myself and our students because she's got projects on the go where our students go out and join her for a day and implement in, uh, restoration projects she's got on the go. Another student just last year, Taylor Miller, she went straight into Dillon Consulting as a full-time employee. She's a very, very strong student, very strong graduate, very determined, and she's apparently really enjoying Dillon Consulting, for instance. 
And finally, Nicole Smith from a few years ago, she worked for TRCA, and then she's now at UBC as a graduate student. That's something I haven't talked about. The ecosystem restoration program isn't entirely about getting you a job. Sometimes people stumble at a university saying, I don't know what I want to do next. And the ecosystem restoration program allows students to dabble in a whole range of, of topics, read a board, and made a start really want to focus on this. And they may go back to graduate school and learn some specialization in that area. Next, please. So that's my end of my presentation. Um, and I think we're going to do questions at the end. But as you know, you've got my email there, msmith at niagaracollege.ca. Email me and I will answer you what I, as best I can. Thanks. Thank you so much, Martin, for that very informative presentation. Again, if you have questions, feel free to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Martin will be happy to answer any questions you have. If nothing comes to mind now, that's okay. You can email Martin as mentioned before and then stick around for the rest of today's presentation. So now we have for environmental management and assessment, we have Patrick Robinson. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you, Sherilyn. And uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. I would say uh, good morning, but maybe it isn't morning where you are. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so I will simply extend welcomes. Um, certainly, uh, some of what my colleague Martin has, has gone over, uh, there are some similarities. I will talk a little bit about that. Um, uh, basically, uh, I think there's a couple of, of things that need to be stressed and a, a similar comment that Martin said, which is uh, you may have learned in, in a university program or in terms of background, uh, your education and experience, uh, in many respects, you're learning the what and why of environmental management. If you come to us, you're going to learn how, and that's really what's going to make you uh, employable. Next slide, please. Right, so um, the program, uh, first of its kind, I should tell you, I'm, my background is a, as a land use planner, and I don't know of any uh, land use planning schools that have such a, a, an intense focus uh, in this type of program, part of what attracted me here. Um, you see there's, uh, we, we have, and I don't mean to toot our own horn, but certainly uh, the faculty, uh, they're not uh, people who have always been in education. They have practical field experience, extensive experience across a, a number of sectors in, uh, in terms of environmental profession. Uh, we, our program is similarly accredited by Eco Canada and uh, in compliance with Canadian national occupational standards. So um, it is important we believe to, uh, to be able to uh, make sure that we're having that quality assurance level in, in the program and staying current. Uh, one of the ways in which we also do that is uh, aside from the, the faculty who have um, a, a lot of field experience and are current in industry trends, we also have a program advisory committee of people in the industry who make sure that we're staying current on uh, issues arising in the uh, environmental management and assessment sector. Um, plenty of uh, hands-on learning opportunities. Uh, some of those, uh, and I'll talk about internships, projects in, in class, similar to some of what Martin was talking about, although with a different focus, uh, um, be able to perhaps talk about a couple of those. And there is a, a, there's an opportunity for um, graduates also similar to uh, seek a uh, professional certification through Eco Canada. So um, that is something that you carry with you. It's part of your portfolio. And again, it's a, a recognition of credentials that are credible in the industry. Next slide, please. So you see the, the, the range of courses, um, quite a collection. It is, a, a, you know, it is an intense program. But what's interesting in uh, when you take a look at these uh, courses is first off, uh, they are connected to one another. They, none of them particularly stands alone. You are going to see uh, as, as part of the education that, for instance, I teach environmental laws and regulations that will come up in uh, other aspects, waste management, health and safety, environmental assessment, environmental site assessment. So uh, there is a, a fair bit of connectivity. But the other thing that it's important about the curriculum overview here is that uh, you should also note that this array of, of courses will give you a number of potential pathways that you may look to pursue as an environmental professional, and there are plenty. So um, next slide, please. 
So again, similar to um, the point that uh, uh, Martin was making, our campus is a living lab. Uh, there's work that's done in our analysis uh, lab courses that uh, relies on uh, sampling and, and analysis right on campus. But more uh, broadly, uh, the entire Niagara region and even beyond is a living lab, especially when it comes to things like um, contaminated sites and brownfield rehabilitation and urban renewal. Uh, those are, there, there's plenty of opportunities that we provide that you are actually going to learn hands-on right in, uh, in the field and uh, be able to, it's tangible, right? It isn't, uh, it's taking the theory and putting it into practice. And uh, I, my experience is not only does that uh, certainly elevate the, the level of learning, uh, it becomes very, very attractive to, uh, to employers. They want to know that uh, the, uh, graduates have practical skills and that those skills are transferable to a number of different uh, potential uh, career pathways. Next slide, please. Right, so um, I mentioned already uh, that we have real live projects um, as much as possible. Uh, even though it's a, a requirement of a course, you are looking at it in many instances a client. Uh, this could include things like environmental compliance assessments, something that is becoming more and more uh, a requirement in industry, in uh, uh, more broadly in, in society, and in some sectors that, that uh, are just starting to uh, get introduced to it. Waste audits, uh, as we become more and more uh, focused on uh, waste reduction, on recycling, on having good uh, green environmental performance, particularly in the corporate world, this is rather critical. Uh, communications plans. Uh, one of the courses I teach is uh, public relations, uh, media relations, and a big component of that course is developing a communication plan for an external client. Um, and that's something you put right in your portfolio. We had a, a couple of examples um, of, of projects. One involved in it actually was a crossover between the Environmental Management Assessment Program and the Ecosystem Restoration Program was a closing plan for a landfill. And Welland, Ontario is here in Niagara. Uh, that project involved securing uh, public input and uh, direction on what they wanted to see happen at that landfill later. Uh, there was then uh, a project involving ecosystem restoration that uh, was uh, doing design for what the closing would look like as a naturalized site, including uh, addressing things like hydrology and drought resistant plants, a uh, range of um, considerations that the city wanted to see. Then once again, our EMA students took it back out and uh, consulted with the community. Did this make sense? Were there any concerns, suggestions, educating them, uh, getting acceptance? And interestingly, the entire thing was endorsed unanimously by city council. Uh, and uh, one student uh, who works currently for the Upper Thames Conservation Authority said very uh, clearly, uh, or was told rather by her uh, employer as soon as she was offered the job, if it hadn't been her, for her work on that uh, landfill project in Welland, they probably wouldn't have hired her. So that's a, to me quite a, a testament. Uh, stakeholder outreach, in, including uh, the ever increasingly important Indigenous engagement is uh, has been one such project. Environmental site assessments, we use real sites for that, and uh, that continues today. And that's just a, a, a small uh, um, component. And as mentioned, uh, many of these projects become key components of, of the portfolio. Back to environmental site assessment, uh, uh, the one my colleague Katie Eltoft, a uh, student who was with the, in that course with her, uh, went to a job interview. They were asking her about environmental site assessment. She was able to pull it right out of her portfolio. She had brought it to her to the interview, with her to the interview. They were rather astonished with the, the sophistication and the depth of the project uh, and hired her on the spot as a result. So uh, this is very real and very important for employers. Next slide, please. So, uh, Big part of it is internships. Uh, basically, and we have a wide range of them. Uh, they cover a variety of sectors, private sector. Uh, in that instance, many consulting firms, uh, but not exclusively. It could be development related firms, uh, public, so municipalities, conservation authorities, uh, uh, 
maybe larger government or quasi-government uh, organizations, and then the not-for-profit sector. And there's a fairly significant uh, presence of not-for-profit sector in the environmental field. So a lot of variety and a lot of opportunity. Uh, the 14 weeks uh, is one day a week, and uh, it is tied to the project management course that uh, you may have seen on, the, on a previous slide. Uh, so making sure that we're helping you work through um, expectations and deliverables. Uh, basically, um, what, has, what happens is we have postings. You have to apply for them, just like a regular job. And you go through that, that uh, uh, exercise. And part of it is once you are secured, um, you have expected deliverables, which will generally be uh, already outlined in the posting anyway. But um, this is real world. And what's nice is in a number of instances, uh, the internship host ends up hiring the student after after their uh, the graduation. And this did not get curtailed in any way, shape or form by COVID. In fact, our last cohort, uh, one of the, I think well, almost 75% already had jobs before they were graduating. So quite a, uh, a good outcome. And um, there's a, a it's, it's also the, the big final event, a uh, major presentation. Uh, we do our level best to prepare you to do that in the most professional way. Uh, you present to colleagues, including, and we also invite intern hosts, so uh, they have a chance to see what the culmination of your work was. And we do have um, someone dedicated, Sandy Herkimer, who, uh, if you join us, you will get to know uh, without question. And she works very, very hard to secure a broad range of internships and to make sure that people are uh, um, lined up with opportunities that are very much what they're looking for professionally. Next slide, please. So, um, and this is a, a small uh, a smattering of career opportunities, but corporate greening or carbon, man carbon management, um, coming out of uh, COP26, I think we can expect a lot more push for carbon management. Uh, corporate greening is not just private sector, also public sector. Uh, some of our municipalities are showing some great leadership on the greening side. Um, develop environmental management systems. This is particularly important for um, industrial sector, not exclusively, uh, but having a, an entire environmental management system. It goes along with, with other forms of risk management. So uh, as, a, as a business line, uh, more specifically, uh, environmental assessments, um, environmental site assessments, uh, risk assessments for, for sites, particularly for contaminated sites, to, to take what are uh, often viewed as liabilities and turn them into assets. They are um, sort of hidden gems that are, are in our landscape all around us. Environmental compliance reporting, uh, many organizations, including the college, and we have opportunities where we have to uh, do reporting along uh, to make sure we're staying on the right side of environmental regulation. Um, Integrated environmental management. So uh, that's more of the broader uh, organizational sustainability. Uh, pollution prevention and control, a big part of it. And that's, so on one side we have uh, a waste management, a solid waste management. On the other, we have means by which we can uh, try to mitigate against that. And as mentioned, community outreach and engagement. Many of our students come to us from a science background, which is great. They don't realize the breadth of, um, public facing activity that is inherent in the environmental uh, management assessment profession. And so they find that uh, there's a, a whole world of, of um, uh, public engagement that they may not have, have understood. And some actually uh, uh, have a natural inclination towards it. So really quite interesting to see. Next slide, please. So uh, a couple of uh, examples. Um, uh, graduates, uh, Kendall Soulier, actually Kendall has come back to speak to, to um, classes and uh, one that I teach, environmental assessment. She works with uh, ACOM, uh, started out on the construction side, found that wasn't working well for her, came to our program and uh, went back and is now an environmental planner and doing some truly uh, leading edge work right now in Northwestern Ontario related to Ring of Fire and working with some 31 Aboriginal Indigenous communities. Um, Great story to tell and is loving it. Um, Andrew Kretz, uh, for anyone interested in uh, getting certification as operators uh, in water and wastewater, um, and that is a pathway that uh, 
many of our grads follow. Andrew, a uh, local individual, got a job with Niagara Region and uh, he's he's been there uh, from shortly after graduation. And the other individual, Emily Chand Chandler, uh, she's the one I mentioned, had worked on the landfill project and was um, did not see herself doing any kind of uh, public engagement and uh, found that not only did she like it, uh, she had a particular knack and so did her employer find that and uh, has, has been working there since. Just I'll mention one other, um, just to give you a round out, um, is an uh, individual who, and this isn't exclusive, but some of the non-for-profits, uh, not-for-profits, and we have students in uh, organizations like Environmental Defense, organizations like Suzuki Foundation. So if you have an inclination that way, it also uh, lends itself. Uh, uh, next slide, please. I believe that might be it. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions, and I will turn it back to uh, Sherilyn and Andrew. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Patrick, again, for a very informative presentation. Again, just so you know, audience, if you have questions, put those in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Um, myself and our guests will be happy to answer any questions. Now we have the commercial beekeeping, and that will be by Andrew Petek. So welcome, Andrew. Great. Thank you very much, Sherilyn. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'll be talking to you today about the commercial beekeeping program here at Niagara College. Um, I'm currently the program technologist, and also I am a graduate of the program myself. Uh, yeah, so the program itself is uh, three consecutive terms uh, starting in January. Um, the program is the first um, ever commercial beekeeping program in Eastern Canada. And it reflects uh, Niagara College's holistic approach to agri-food and commitment uh, to help meeting the demand for uh, commercial beekeepers um, across Canada and to focus on improving the, um, the de decline in honeybee populations around the world. Um, we have applied learning experience, experiences through on-campus apiary management. Uh, the program itself started um, with one uh, bee yard with 30 colonies in June 2016. We've now um, moved it up to about 100 colonies distributing among five yards uh, within the Niagara region. Um, it's reflective of a provincial focus on pollinator health strategies um, with the main aim to create highly skilled labor uh, force in the beekeeping industry, um, which will be able to take care of uh, managed pollinators um, and wild, wild pollinators as well, since they are in a decline as well um, globally. So this program has a program advisory committee that is engaged and represents a number of sectors within the beekeeping industry. And they're involved in the planning, implementation, uh, regulation and promotion of eco ecological restoration activities. Um, we also, uh, the program here is an active member of a number of different um, groups, organizations and associations. Uh, some of which include the Ontario Beekeepers Association, as well as the uh, Canadian Association of Professional Apiculturalists. Um, so is the commercial beekeeping uh, graduate certificate program right for you? So the five main questions are, are you someone that's a graduate of a post-secondary education that's looking to have a career in beekeeping? Or are you a commercial beekeeper that wants to upgrade their knowledge? Are you maybe a sideliner or a hobbyist beekeeper that wants to uh, scale up and get into that commercial beekeeping um, level. Um, maybe you're a apiary manager or a bee yard manager for an already existing commercial beekeeping operation and you want to um, learn uh, more about starting your own business in terms of beekeeping or whether maybe you're a family farmer that wants to supplement uh, farm income. Uh, if you've answered to any of these five questions then the answer is yes this commercial beekeeping program is right for you. Um, there's a number of of people that come into this program um, that have no beekeeping experience whatsoever. And that's absolutely fine. Um, this program has been laid out in a way that we follow the annual honeybee um, life cycle, which allows you at the start of the program to build a foundation and knowledge about beekeeping and apiculture, and then move your way through um, by applying that knowledge um, in the actual bee yard and then creating a plan for yourself for becoming a commercial beekeeper. So this program, um, it doesn't um, focus necessarily on beekeeping itself. It can branch out into a number of different things. And you'll see that throughout the 15 courses that are um, incorporated into this program. Uh, so some of these things you might see is branching out um, your apiary skills into ecological restoration, 
um, into culinary landscape design, um, environmental projects, um, research and innovation, and product design. So it's not just a main focus on taking care of bees or looking at a colony. Um, this program has the ability to open up your mind and take your beekeeping knowledge and move it on and apply it into other branches where beekeeping um, might not necessarily um, be the first thing you think about, but uh, things like culinary producing different types of honeys or sort of um, products that are based on products that you take out of the hive, things like that. So this is a very broad program and you have a lot of opportunities coming out of it when you take this program. So yeah, the curriculum overview, we have 15 courses, as I mentioned before, um, and the terms are broken up um, in a way that helps students um, build up the knowledge in order to progress on to the next term. So the first term is kind of a group of five courses that are all related to each other, and they're kind of just building the foundation and knowledge um, about uh, honeybees and beekeeping in general. So you'll be learning about honeybee health, the importance of pollination and how they impact the environment, um, principles of bee business. So what you'll be looking at in terms of kind of establishing a business yourself, entomology of bees, so how a bee works, how the hive um, functions as a superorganism, how each individual bee's um, uh, anatomy, you'll go over that. And then the last one in the first term is transitory mobile hive management, which is a focus on the um, process of pollination. So beekeepers in Ontario, how you build up your colonies, what sort of requirements you need in order to send your bees out east uh, to pollinate crops such as blueberries. Uh, then in second term, we'll use the knowledge from first term into applying it into the actual bee yard. So you'll start off with apiary management we'll, where you'll be working in the um, Niagara College bee yard and focusing um, all the knowledge that you've had on taking care of a, a specific colony or a number of colonies. Um, you'll be doing a construction techniques uh, course, which will teach you how to build equipment for yourself and for your beekeeping operation, um, integrated pest management, how to maximize honeybee health um, and minimize uh, pest and disease um, uh, using treatments and appropriate methods of management. Um, one whole course we have during the summer semester, the second term is the uh, queen rearing program or a queen rearing course, my sake. Um, which focuses on the ability and the science for you to make your own queens within your own operations, whether it's for you to expand your own um, colonies and, and bee yards or for, your, for the purpose of selling them to other beekeepers. We have one whole uh, course that focuses on the science and biology of rearing your own queens. And then the last one, which is, uh, uh, continues on into the next semester, which is a commercial beekeeping project. So this is a placement course where you will um, one day a week will be placed into a commercial beekeeping operation um, from which you will kind of uh, get to experience firsthand what it is to work for a commercial beekeeper. beekeeper. Um, and in doing so, you'll also um, talk with the, that uh, commercial beekeeping operation and develop some sort of project um, that you will present at the end of the program um, in the final semester, um, which continues on into commercial beekeeping project two. Um, and then your project, you'll uh, develop kind of a presentation and we'll invite all of the commercial beekeepers who had um, hosted students um, over the spring and fall terms um, to see these presentations. So um, the rest of the fall term, we're gonna be looking at things like communications of beekeeping. So um, being able to put presentations, scientific papers, um, being able to um, write um, in a scientific way. It's a course basically that helps you um, be able to communicate within the beekeeping industry. Um, we'll continue on apiary management, um, but the focus here now will be extracting the final honey crop, um, putting down treatments and managing your colony so that they're healthy, and then preparing them for overwintering. Um, another course is sustainable commercial beekeeping. So um, what we can do in terms of beekeeping that will make it um, self-sustainable and as, as environmentally friendly as possible. And then the final course is commercial beekeeping regulations. So what your legal rights are as a beekeeper, um, what you're obligated to do with, in terms of registration, uh, as well as regulations in terms of selling honey, selling bees, labeling and things like that. So like I mentioned in the previous slide, that first term is like a building a foundation. So the list of the courses are here. We'll be looking at honeybee health, making sure that your, our, your bees are as strong and as healthy as they can. And they're um, uh, producing honey, producing bees at the most optimal level that they can. 
Ecology of pollinators again will be looking at the importance of pollination not only for native or not only for honeybees but also native bee pollinators um, and how they have um, an impact on the environment that they're in. Commercial beekeeping regulations. This one and bee business um, uh, have been changing between first and third semester, um, but in this in this course, what you'll be learning is uh, again uh, regulations in terms of what your legal obligations are as a beekeeper, um, and then finally entomology of bees. Uh, which is looking at the anatomy, biology of a honeybee um, and the uh, honeybee colony as a superorganism. And then transitory hive management uh, is the um, pollination of crops. Uh, second term, again, it's the uh, application a term. So we'll be putting the knowledge and skills that you've learned in first term and applying them within the bee yard. So a few pictures here, you can see that's our Niagara College uh, bee yard here on campus. Um, so. It's approximately 50 uh, colonies in that yard. Um, what you'll be doing throughout the term is you'll be um, managing one specific nuke yourself, that, that will be your focus, but you'll also be looking at other um, colonies within the, within the yard and making sure that they're um, as healthy and strong as possible. You'll be looking at things while integrating the other courses. So you'll be looking at things like pests and when we need to treat them, how we manage them, how we identify them. Um, and that's, um, uh, knowledge that you'll gain within integrated pest management, uh, queen rearing, that bottom picture there that you see with the, uh, with the girl holding the frame with the bees, those are all individual queen cells that are covered up with uh, worker bees. So those are cells that were produced within our apiary by students, and they're basically queens that can produce a new colony or can be sold to other beekeepers. So there's a course on its own, queen rearing. Um, that's one of the main attractants for our program um, a lot of beekeepers that come to this program like to take that course to, to learn how they can better their own operation by minimizing costs and rearing their own queens. Um, that middle photo there, the smaller one, is our apiary construction techniques um, course. So you'll be building elements uh, of the hive, such as boxes, supers, frames, lids. Um, within that uh, course, you'll also have a project where you'll build your own um, unique uh, items. So whether it's something that's already existing or maybe something new, um, it's always a fun course to take. And then, like I mentioned, the commercial beekeeping project, you'll be placed with a commercial beekeeper. And then uh, third, third term, so we're kind of planning and creating based on the knowledge we've had in the first two terms. So communications of beekeeping, uh, this is just a course to help you with um, your writing skills, presenting skills, data analysis, um, things that are related to the beekeeping industry that are not necessarily hands-on within the bee yard. Um, we'll continue on with apiary management too, which will be um, the fall and winter prep of honeybee colonies. Um, sustainable commercial beekeeping. Uh, this is uh, making sure that your beekeeping operation is self-sufficient, self-sustaining, as well as environmentally friendly and with the lowest impact on the environment as possible. Uh, principles of bee business. So at this point, you'll be able to Think about with your with your knowledge and your experience in the previous two terms. Think about what sort of commercial beekeeping um, business you'll want to be in uh, once you graduate. And then, like I mentioned, the commercial beekeeping project too. It's continued on from the last semester, so you'll be with your um, internship or your placement with your commercial beekeeper once a week. Um, and then at this time, you'll be helping them out, but also developing a project um, that you've established in the second term, which you'll present at the end to the entire class, as well as the um, hosts of the placements. So just an overview of that project placement. So the placements, they're either on campus here, they're with partners that are um, partners to Niagara College or with other commercial beekeepers. Um, these individual projects that you will develop within these placements are specialized um, and focused on what, uh, which internship or which placement you're with. So you'll talk with the commercial beekeeper or, or with your um, representative on campus to see what sort of project you'd like to develop or what project they would like you to like to see you develop. And then you'll work on that for two terms, which you'll present at the end. Um, this is an opportunity if you're working with a placement on campus to connect with other departments, you know, such as landscape, culinary, to kind of develop something unique um, to beekeeping and unique to the college in general. Um, but also it has the opportunity to connect and provide meaningful research for the beekeepers and the beekeeping industry. So as an example of myself, I was, an in, I was placed at University of Guelph when I was here for the first year of the program. And I uh, got to present my work, um, not only at Niagara College, but after at two other um, 
uh, conferences once I've graduated. So uh, it does, this program does open a lot of doors for a lot of people in the beekeeping industry and um, it, not necessarily within education, but also within government, not-for-profits and other commercial beekeeping um, operations. So yeah, like uh, we have a few pictures here of some profile beekeeping projects that we've done. Um, so we had a student that was involved with the honey resistant, sorry, the Ontario Resistant Honey Bee Selection Program, uh, which is a program uh, dedicated to um, producing um, a, a honey bee a strain within Ontario that's uh, resistant to varroa mites and other types of uh, pests and diseases within Ontario. Um, other such students uh, have been able to take part in the Ontario Bee Association's Tech Transfer Program, where they've been hired uh, full time. Um, other such projects um, have been uh, the production of mead. Uh, that's a very popular thing now. Uh, so a lot of beekeepers are starting to expand their operations production of mead and um, sp specialized honeys. So the opportunities coming out of this program. So you can become an apiarist, a, a beekeeper, either at a small or, or commercial uh, scale, an apiary laborer, manager, technician, um, honey production supervisor, uh, honey or beehive producer, uh, the owner of a commercial beekeeping uh, operation, pollination services provider, seasonal beekeeper, as well as uh, a government um, honeybee inspector. And then here are just a few snapshots of some of our graduates. So um, on the far right, we have Joanna Paul. Um, she is a, gra a graduate of the program who is a small scale beekeeper. She's also a board member of the Ontario Beekeepers Association. On the bottom is uh, Angela Rosenkrantz. She was a classmate of mine. Um, she has her own winery or, or her own vineyard here in, in Niagara College, or in Niagara, sorry. Um, but also she has her own uh, small scale beekeeping operation that produces honey as well. And myself, I have, well, since I've graduated, I've been able to um, uh, do graduate studies at Western University um, doing research in honeybee. Um, biology and probiotics. Uh, I worked for the government as an Ontario honeybee uh, inspector. I also have my own commercial operation that I've been running now since uh, 2017, since I joined the, the first year of the program. And now I'm currently working at Niagara College as their bee technologist. So um, this program does provide a lot of opportunities. Um, when you graduate, there's a lot of job opportunities, a lot of um, uh, further education opportunities in postgraduate uh, studies. So um, yeah, it is a worthwhile program to look into. Yeah, and that's, that's it for me. So if anyone has any questions, yeah, feel free to, to ask or email me later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew, for a great presentation once again. Um, thank you, everyone. We do have a few questions. Well, one question that is in the chat currently for Martin. Um, if you would like me to read this question aloud and you can answer live, or if you rather answer in the Q and A, that's okay as well. Um, do you have a preference, Martin? Well, go ahead. Tell me the question. Okay. <laughs> read, it, read it slowly for the old guy. <laughs> Perfect. So this question is actually two parts. So it says, "What is the average class size in the ecosystem restoration program?" That's part one. That's a good question. We have a maximum of fifty students. This year we have a fifty students broken up into two sections of twenty-five students each. Last year, we had a total of 30 students during the quieter COVID times. In that case, of course, be 15 and 15. So the largest section size you can anticipate in the program with the current capacity is 25 per section. We have to keep it that down to 25 because the capacity of our labs, they can only hold 25 students at the very best of times. And also from the safety point of view out in the field, I can't shepherd more than 25 students. So that's, that's that question. Second question is, Will there be any opportunities for prospective students to connect with current or recently graduated students? Oh, I do that regularly. Yes, uh, some of the past graduates love to talk to new potential students. So certainly um, those people that we were listed in our presentation, I know at least two of them, well, well um, uh, Ms. Smith and but the other two are quite close by and they'd be glad to talk to prospective students, for sure, for sure. But email me and I would introduce you to them. And uh, if you email me with a couple of specific questions I could forward to those past students, that would work best to be kind of efficient. Perfect, thank you. And just so you know, the, um, the 
emails are on your screen. So again, uh, Martin does say email him if, he, if you want to be connected with those current or past students. I believe, uh, Patrick, you have a question? Or you have yes. a statement? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just uh, similar to um, Martin's uh, response, same for the EMA program. We do put you in contact. We can put you in contact with current and past students. What's more, and I, I know ecosystem restoration does the same. We do a, a career day during this during the program, so uh, past students come back and talk about where they are, how they've progressed, what they took with them from the program, and uh, that is also uh, something that goes over well. And as I mentioned, where possible, we try to bring grads back to actually be guest uh, speakers right in the program itself. So a lot of opportunity to connect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Patrick. There is a question as well for you, Andrew. How many students are accepted into the beekeeping program? Uh, that the maximum number, I don't necessarily know, but we have had uh, cohorts range between eight to 20 students. So uh, there's always uh, room for that. And uh, we accept, you know, as many students as we can, the more the merrier. Uh, but it is a fairly new program that started in 2017. So um, it's not as high capacity as the other programs. Um, but yeah, if you are interested, definitely, um, definitely email myself or Miley and, and we'll be happy to help out. Perfect, thank you so much. I have a question for everyone. Um, this one is, how are the programs being delivered currently? Is it hybrid, in person, is it both? Yes, right, last year we taught all, any lectures were online, but this year we are teaching any lab field work in person as usual, and maybe about 25, 30% of lectures are still online. Next term, we're going back to fully in person. Next term, it didn't make sense from the COVID release. So I anticipate next September, we're going to be back to what we used to call normal as in lectures in person, labs and field, of course, in person. Perfect. I'll let you answer next, Patrick. Same. Um, we, uh, we're in a bit of a transition getting back. So our, um, our labs uh, are on campus. Uh, I, I have one course on campus uh, that's delivered face-to-face. Delivered -face. Um, everything else, for the most part, is currently online, but it's online live. So uh, it, it is what we call synchronous. And then we are anticipating come January that we will be uh, almost, it will be about 70% uh, person in person with a little bit of flexibility for online learning that is actually we, we've learned from COVID so uh, more trying to incorporate where appropriate uh, the, a, a balance between the in person and, and online. Perfect Andrew. Uh, same for us as well. Um, I think what the idea is come this term in January that we will be um, in person for most of our lectures with online as an option for some people who can't um, and then second term uh, is all in person and all of our activities out in the bee yards are uh, in person. So we will continue that on um, uh, same for third semester with the half of the first half being um, in person in the labs and then the remainder being lectures um, either in person or through online depending on the situation. Okay, thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Hope to see you at Niagara College. Bye everyone. Take care. Yep.